Thank you AWS for sponsoring this video. Okay, picture this. It's a typical Monday morning and as a cloud architect, you're gearing up for the week ahead. Your company has just launched a new lineup of eco-friendly shoes to the public and things are looking pretty good. But then something unexpected happens. The shoes become so popular that your company's servers are hit with a huge surge of traffic that they aren't able to handle. Customer complaints start pouring in, tickets begin to pile up, and developers are scrambling to patch things together. The pressure is on and you find yourself in the middle of it. Thankfully, you and your team manage to fix the issue just in time. But a few hours later, the manager taps you on the shoulder and needs you to find a solution to help prevent these situations from happening again. What I just described is one of the many situations that cloud developers and architects face from time to time. It's part of the job and can sometimes feel like you're on a firefighting mission. But what if I told you that there's a way to minimize these types of situations? or even better, stop them from happening in the first place. Hey everyone, this is Lucy, and in this video, we're going to explore the AWS Well Architected Framework, something that could completely change the way you build things on the cloud. This framework will help you tackle and prevent common cloud computing challenges. So make sure you stick around if you want to build cloud systems that are prepared for anything that comes in their way. So the AWS Well Architected Framework, to put it simply, is a set of strategies and guidelines for designing and running workloads in the cloud. It's created by AWS and provides a framework to help cloud architects build resilient architectures. Now, this framework doesn't just provide you with a list of do's and don'ts. Instead, it gives you a blueprint and guideline for building resilient, scalable, and secure applications and workloads, essentially taking the guesswork out of building things in the cloud. It also provides a consistent approach for AWS customers and partners to evaluate their architectures. And this helps them create designs that will scale with application designs over time. Okay, now you might be wondering, why is it important for me to understand this framework? Well, let's think back to the scenario from the start of the video. Without proper planning and architecting, companies can get easily blindsided by sudden changes to the infrastructure. For example, when there's a sudden surge of traffic. The result, system crashes, unhappy customers, and countless numbers of hours spent on damage control. In our digital age, any downtime or disruption can not only cost companies a lot of money, but can also cause damage to reputation and loss of customer trust. And that's why building resilient architectures is no longer a choice, but rather a necessity. Understanding and applying the AWS Well Architecture Framework can help you avoid common pitfalls, decrease your risk, and pretty much just make sure your applications are well architected. It's also important to note that this framework is the result of years of real world experience from people designing and managing workloads in the cloud. When you understand and use the AWS Well Architecture Framework, you're essentially tapping into the combined knowledge of countless cloud architects who have faced similar issues and have figured out ways to effectively mitigate them. And so by understanding and implementing the framework, you're not just leveraging AWS expertise, but also making sure your systems can handle real world scenarios. It's kind of like having a roadmap for architecture in the cloud that sets you up for success. To give you a better idea of what the World Architecture Framework looks like, here are the six main pillars that the framework is built around. So the first one is security, and then there's cost optimization, performance efficiency, sustainability, reliability, and operational excellence. And these pillars are more than just buzzwords. Each one focuses on a specific component that contributes to a World Architecture Cloud setup. By following these best practices, you can architect for high availability, plan for business continuity, and so on. Okay, so firstly, the security pillar focuses on protecting your data, systems, and assets. This includes confidentiality of data, identity and access management, as well as establishing controls to detect security threats. The next pillar is cost optimization. This is all about avoiding unnecessary cost. It's about using the right types of resources for your workloads and making cost-effective decisions over the long term. Performance efficiency is all about using compute resources efficiently to meet system requirements and maintaining that efficiency as demand changes and technologies evolve. And the sustainability pillar focuses on minimizing environmental impact whilst running cloud workloads. Now let's zoom into the remaining two pillars, operational excellence and reliability. These two pillars are very important because they provide you with architectural best practices and guidance to improve the resilience of your workloads. So starting with the operational excellence pillar, this is about running and monitoring systems to deliver business value and continuity. The goal here is not only to have a system that's efficient and reliable, but also one that improves over time. 
time. Here are the design principles for the operational excellence pillar. The first one is perform operations as code. So what does this mean? Think of your entire workload as you would a piece of software. By turning your operations into scripts and automating them, we can reduce mistakes that come with human error and create predictable responses whenever certain events occur. The second one is to make frequent, small, reversible changes. For this one, the aim is to make changes in small steps that can be undone if needed. This approach helps deal with issues quickly without any major effects to your customers. The next one is refine operation procedures frequently. Now, this is all about constant improvement. As your workload evolves, your procedures should evolve with it. Always be on the lookout for ways to refine and streamline your operations. Next up, we have anticipate failure. So instead of waiting for things to go wrong, try to identify the possible failures before they occur. And by regularly testing these scenarios, you can better understand the impact and then ensure that the response procedures are kept up to date. Lastly, we have learn from operational failures. Every operational event or failure is a learning opportunity, so don't shy away from them. Instead, use these lessons to help you build stronger and more resilient systems. You could also share this knowledge across your different teams so that they can learn from each other. Next, let's dive into the reliability pillar. This one focuses on the ability of a system to recover from disruptions, dynamically meet demands, and mitigate disruptions. Here are the design principles for the reliability pillar. The first one is automatically recover from failure. This principle simply means to monitor important metrics closely and use automation to fix issues as soon as they occur. In other words, your system bounces back automatically when something goes wrong. The second one is to test recovery procedures. This principle suggests that we should actively test how our system handles failure. In practice, this means using automation to simulate frequent failure scenarios to make sure that recovery plans work as intended. Next up, we have horizontal scale to increase aggregate workload availability. With this principle, the goal is to spread our workload across multiple smaller resources. That way, if one part fails, it's not going to shut down everything. Another principle to reliability is to stop guessing capacity. This means that we should monitor exactly how much our systems are being used and adjust our resources accordingly. So the goal here is to have just as much resources as you need, no more, no less. And finally, we have manage change through automation. For this one, it's all about automating any changes to our infrastructure. This method helps keep everything consistent, easily trackable, and smooth running. To give you an example of how the reliability and operational excellence pillars are used, let's take company A for example. Company A is an online store that sells watches. They recently launched a new set of watches that thousands of people around the world wanted to buy, resulting in a huge surge of web traffic. This is how they handled the situation. So whenever the new watches were added to the online catalog, an automated system will trigger all the necessary systems to update. They also had real-time monitoring tools to track and respond to any issues, so that if there was an error in the system, they would be notified right away. So thanks to the operational excellence pillar, they were able to navigate this surge without any issues. But what about when there's an even bigger surge in traffic? For example, during the holiday season when people are buying watches for their friends and family. That's where the reliability pillar comes in. Company A designed their system so that it dynamically handles increased load by automatically scaling their cloud infrastructure. So if a server fails, a backup server immediately kicks in keeping the online store accessible. And so by adopting the operational excellence and reliability pillars from the World Architecture Framework, Company A was able to build an efficient and reliable system capable of delivering a seamless shopping experience for their customers. To get started with the AWS World Architecture Framework, you can check out the link in the description below that directs you straight to the AWS World Architecture landing page. Here, you'll find out more about the six pillars and you can access detailed documentation on each of them. But yeah, overall, I think it's a great resource for developers solutions architects and anyone working with cloud infrastructure. It's very user-friendly and is available completely for free. So I'd recommend visiting the website to learn more and try it out for yourselves. Okay, so this wraps up our deep dive into the AWS World Architecture Framework. The key takeaway is that it's not just a set of documentation or guidelines. It's almost like a long-term companion to advise you on how to build robust, scalable, and secure systems in the cloud. If you found this video helpful, please remember to give it a like and let me know your thoughts on this framework in the comments below. All right, bye for now.